Jesus of Nazareth was one of, if not the most influential person who ever lived. But that was 2,000 years ago, and a lot of information can be lost between then and now. Now, I, as a believer, take it for granted that he existed, but what if I told you that there are people who actually argued that he didn't exist? Well, that's the series of thoughts I'm going to be covering in this new series of videos. Let me tell you a story. It starts in 2007, the early years of YouTube, right when the internet was starting to resemble what we recognize it as today. And video streaming was just beginning to become a viable thing. In June of that year, an independently made documentary called Zeitgeist the Movie took the internet by storm. Based on a stage performance by Peter Joseph, the ease and convenience of YouTube allowed the documentary to gain far more traction than it would have otherwise. Zeitgeist used a combination of archival footage, animations, and narration to illustrate three points. The film has been, and more or less at the time was, negatively panned by more critical audiences. Divided into three sections, the documentary talks about several conspiracy theories, one being a 9-11 conspiracy theory section, which borrows a lot of ideas from the documentary Loose Change, and another that talks a lot about conspiracy theories involving the Federal Reserve. Now, despite the two of those being the most politically relevant, they are not what caught most people's attention. The first section of the film made a series of claims about Jesus of Nazareth being a fictional character, that had elements borrowed from Egyptian gods like Horus and Osiris. This section of the film garnered the most attention and spawned a cottage industry of homemade documentaries countering the claims made in Zeitgeist. Just search Zeitgeist on YouTube and you'll find over 400,000 results, and about half of them will be people refuting the first section of the film. I remember coming across the film at the time and immediately rejecting it on premise. Even when I finally took the time to watch it, I was just deriding it the whole way through. It was years before I got past the first section of the movie and realized that the entire thing was just a big conspiracy theory documentary. The latter two ideas I was familiar with as conspiracy theories, but the first section just seemed like an overreaching atheist who was losing an argument. Well, I had eventually learned that not only was this argument not new, but it actually even had a name. It was called the Christ Myth Theory. There are many aspects of the Christmas theory which I'm going to cover in this series, but the bottom line of this theory, more accurately hypothesis, is that it challenges the historicity of Jesus of Nazareth. What is historicity, you ask? Basically, historicity is questioning the actualness of something, you know? Did an event actually occur? Did a person actually exist? Someone who believes a Christmas theory questions whether or not Jesus actually existed in the flesh and blood, and that they will argue that due to similarities between the story of Jesus and other mythologies and questioning of the primary sources, that he did not exist. A person who believes the Christ myth theory is referred to as a mythicist, but the word myth has many uses, and within the context of the Christ myth theory, a myth is referring to a completely fictional story, or a completely fictional thing. So a mythicist believes that the Jesus of the Bible is a completely fictional character. Within the realm of mythicists, however, there are two broad camps. One camp believes that a historical Jesus may have existed in the first century Palestine, but we know nothing about him, and that the Jesus of the New Testament has nothing to do with him, and or the deeds of the fictional Jesus were later attributed to this unknown historical Jesus. I like to refer to the people in this camp as soft mythicists, because they leave the option open that a historical Jesus may have existed, but that we know nothing about him. The other broad camp believes that not only is the Jesus of the New Testament completely fictional, but that there was never a human person like Jesus. They see the story of Jesus similar to that of King Arthur, a fictional character who was later historicized. These people leave no room for a historical Jesus, so I like to refer to them as hard mythicists. Most mythicists can be classified into one of these two camps. Now, what do academics have to say about this issue? Well, surprisingly enough, not a lot. Most scholars in the fields of New Testament or Biblical studies don't pay attention to mythicists or the Christ myth theory. But if they are confronted with the idea, they swiftly renounce it. The academic consensus is that Jesus was an actual person, was Jewish, was born and raised in first century Roman Palestine, and then was executed by the Romans sometime in the early 30s CE. The reasons for this will be brought forward in later episodes as we cover the arguments of the mythicists, but I want to make my position on this issue clear from the very start. I side with the academics. The evidence for Jesus having existed and having lived a life more or less as the Gospels described 
is very overwhelming. I admit that I am a practicing Christian and have a bias towards believing everything said in the Gospels, but then again, you don't have to be a Christian to believe that Jesus was an actual living person. Even atheist scholars such as Dr. Bart Ehrman, who wrote a book on the subject, believes that Jesus existed. I myself am not a believer in Jesus, but I do believe in history. And I believe it's important to know what actually happened in the past, even if we would prefer that something else had happened. So if academic consensus is so much against this idea, then why am I making a video or even a series of videos about it? There are three reasons. First, as my videos on secession and monarchism can tell you, I have a fascination with niche and fringe ideas. Second, this subject was what I wrote my senior thesis on, and I'll be damned if I'm not going to make use of that research for YouTube. And third, academia's ignoring of this argument hasn't made it go away. In fact, it's only grown. There are at least seven popular documentaries that either feature the Christ myth theory as its main focus or as a side point. Books on the subject continue to be published, and the internet's ability to preserve communities based around blatantly false or antiquated ideas has made the Christ myth theory gain a wider audience. This series is going to cover the history of the Christ myth theory, the arguments used by its proponents, and the evidence that those who believe Jesus existed used to affirm that belief. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss episode two, when I cover the primary sources used by historians to create the historical portrait of Jesus. If you want to support this channel, then you can do so by going to patreon.com slash granthurst and contribute a certain amount of money per video. If you'd like to dig deeper into this subject, then you can go down to the descriptions where I have a list of Amazon affiliate links to books I'll be using for this series. You can also support this channel by sharing this and my other videos on social media. I personally would recommend Reddit. They've done well on there before. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.